All right, PIO, Public Information Officer. In general, what does that mean in particular with the LAFD? Sure, well, when you look at that title in general, really for all departments, the public, the information and the officer, the information is, is a big part of what we do. It's the gathering and disseminating. When we're doing our messaging, often we'll use a messaging triangle, so we're gonna tell people what is happening. We're gonna tell them what we're doing about it and ultimately what it means to them. The Los Angeles Fire Department responded at 12.10 p.m. to two different schools in the South Los Angeles area for a hazardous materials type of an incident. Overall, we always say we strive to do three things to gain a fourth. And so we want to be timely, accurate, and consistent with our messaging, and that gives us credibility. When you have a big brush fire, and when you see one of us in front of a map, and we're pointing, saying this is where the fire is, this is where it's going, anybody south of Mulholland, west of the 405, north of Sunset, east of Topanga needs to evacuate now, we want people to do that. Does each person in this communications department have an area of expertise, or is it just who's on duty? I mean, where would you step in before um, Captain Scott steps in, that sort of thing? So in the PSO office, as we call the public service officer, we're a one-person office. We work 24-hour shifts, just like a firefighter in the field. Um, and there's three shifts. So there's three of us that do this job. And we work in a different location from Captain Scott and our other PIOs uh, in the dispatch center. So if we need a PIO at an incident physically, um, that's the communication that we'll provide to Captain Scott. And so they'll physically go. So. Uh, in terms of us you know, being ahead of them, it's, it's that incident-based situation where we need someone physically there because of the size of the incident, because of the severity, you know, whatever the factor is. Uh, and then they become our direct line of communication with the incident to gather information. A couple things you have both mentioned is wildfires. And um, we are in a very interesting geographic area in which we have city, we have suburb, we also have you know, some very rural, and we have canyons. And, and so how are we doing this year? I mean, the, as we were sitting here talking, uh, they have determined that this was the hottest July on record for, for the t amount of time that they've been keeping those records. So the threat is pretty profound. How are we doing from your standpoint? Is everybody obeying what they're supposed to be doing and what should we be doing in order to prevent anything catastrophic? Well, I think when you look at it on a big level, like you mentioned, we live in a unique area. So, you know, federally, there's 16 emergency disasters that can happen anywhere in the world. And a lot of people are surprised to learn that 13 can hit right here in Los Angeles. Things from extreme heat, cold, cyber attacks, earthquakes, tsunamis, but the wildfires are one that we're all too familiar with. We're seeing them increase in duration, we're seeing them increase in severity, and when you look at the whole state of California last year, we burned four million acres. And that was double the record the previous year, and right now we're on set to surpass even that. And it's really due to climate change, it's due to the drought, it's due to people moving into the wildland urban interface or next to brush. And the point is, people need to be prepared. Know that Ready, Set, Go program, have brush clearance and harden your home. Okay, Ready, Set, Go is have everything in a bag ready to run. Ready, Set, Go is something that is standardized across the entire state. So if you've chosen to live in an area that's prone to wildfires, and myself, I actually live up against the brush, you kind of always need to be ready. You need to have a plan. You need to know where your escape routes are. Have more than one. You need to predetermine what is special to you and your family, and therefore, if you have to evacuate, to, to be able to take those. That's all just kind of getting ready. Ready also includes brush clearance and hardening your home. Mm -hmm. But now the set is probably the most key, because when a wildfire threatens your area, or there's one nearby now, is the time you put your predetermined plan into action. And you actually grab those belongings, those personal computers, those memorabilia that's so important to you, your, your money, your prescriptions, your eyeglasses, and you put that all into your vehicle, you back your vehicle into your driveway, you roll up those windows, you remove the patio furniture from around your house, or if you're rural, propane or wood, things that would burn, 
and therefore you're ready in the event that you see one of us come on and we say it's time to evacuate in this area, then you just simply get to go and you move out of that area. And that's how we, um, in the unique role of being public information officers, still get to have a life saving role with the mm -hmm. emergency public information. We still have some more live with LAFD to come to you. We'll be joining Fire Station 13 out in the Pico Union, Koreatown area. I understand that you wear a couple hats with the LAFD. I mean, you have the communications component, so you know how that reaches the community at large and what responsibilities you have there. And then you also work with the canine unit, which I think is fascinating. So how do you balance that and what are the two parts of that? Right, so my official role is as PSO. We're 24 hour platoon duty, just like being in, on a fire engine. Uh, so we have three areas that we focus on. One is incident information. So we create what we call alerts um, when any significant incident. So we're going to get information out and that includes large brush fires, evacuations, safety information. And then there's queries. So the media is going to call us throughout the day asking questions for their news shows. And then the public, any question they have about the fire department ends up on our desk. So we'll sort through that. And then the other piece is social media. So we use it for education, for communication, for incidents. So that's my official role. And then my secondary role that I chose to take on is as a canine handler. For the last 12 years or so, I've also worked human remains detection, which you know, is unfortunately looking for people that didn't survive. And whether that's at a collapsed fire or I may do searches for law enforcement agencies, et cetera. But that's something I personally do that's not an official part of this role. Okay, and just on a personal note, what's the dog's name? Vea. Vea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And Breed? She's an American lab. Okay. She's amazing. <laughs> I have no doubt. Becoming a firefighter, I knew that it was the right choice for me. I think that's a lifelong challenge is just being confident and knowing what you want and being willing to go for it. Okay, so where do you fit into this puzzle of communication? My main function is to provide Angelinos with a Spanish spokesperson. And I would imagine that's an incredibly important responsibility given the diversity of our population. What are some of the problems created if people are not prepared? What happens if they don't listen and get all that organized and get out in a timely fashion? Well, it creates problems for firefighters. Our main mission is, number one, the safety of the public and keeping them safe, but number two, to facilitate the firefighting work that happens out there and making sure people evacuate out of their communities in an organized and timely manner supports the people in the field. And what we don't want is to create a funnel of traffic heading out of hillside communities when our fire engines are trying to come in and defend those properties. We run about 24 fires a day that involve persons experiencing homelessness. So just over 50% really? of our fires uh, end, end up in that category. Fire Chief Terrazas was very proactive. We, we've been doing things to combat that for years, starting in 2017 when you had the Skirball fire that was sparked by uh, illegal cooking in a homeless encampment. We did windshield surveys, meaning that we had the fire apparatus in areas that were near brush to drive and looking through their windshields and determine exactly where homeless encampments were. And our role was essentially twofold, to identify and notify, identify where they are, who owned it, and then notify them of the encampment. And it's a really a citywide issue for people to assist. So it's an ongoing uh, effort, an ongoing challenge that we will step up to. And it's, again, it's a lot of different city entities involved. But you're always not doing emergencies or warnings or evacuations or tragedies. You get to talk about other things, correct? Absolutely. Public education is a big part of what we do. And we want to make sure that the public is educated, not just at the uh, internet level with public dissemination of information, but our outreach. Our, our outreach happens through partners like My Safe LA and other organizations that bring us into the public and private schools where we teach young children. And also we have been um, moving into social media where we put out information and videos that educate people not only about fire safety but also safety in general. 